Uh, and we're going to move on now to uh, Grace Mackenzie Smith from Princeton. Grace, are you there? All right. And uh, she'll be talking about uh, Bumblebee Nurse and Forager cast show distinct. Uh oh, we'll be talking about swirls. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, but we're, we're uh, seeing presenter view, but that's okay. If that's the only way it's going to work. Oh, Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. I'm going to assume that that is a yes and can that I'm being heard. Can you click um, swap, swap display so at the top left? Hi, my name is Grace Mackenzie Smith. I'm from Princeton um, in Josh Chavis's group. And today I'm going to be talking about um, different social interactions in Bumblebee uh, casts, specifically um, the nurse and forager cast in bumblebees. Um, so uh, I thought it would be good since we just heard a talk about honeybees to start off with a little background um, and distinguish honeybees from bumblebees. So honeybees live in very large colonies. Um, there are about 10,000 to more individuals in a honeybee colony um, and they have a very structured society both socially and physically. Um, their working caste system is age-based, so bees will go through different life stages where they have different jobs within um, a colony. Um, and they, we understand a lot about honeybee communication. So their communication is primarily based on dances, which can show uh, where food is, and also pheromones, which we just heard a lot about. Um, in contrast, bumblebees live in much smaller communities. Um, there are only 100 to 200 bumblebees in any given colony, and they have very fluid working casts. So most bumblebee colonies will have two main casts of nurses and foragers, and we don't really understand which bees will choose to go into those casts, and we don't understand what causes them to change casts. Um, and we also don't understand very much about bumblebee communication. We think it involves multiple sensory modalities, so there's probably a component that is pheromone-based, there's probably a component that is motion-based, but we don't really understand how those are distinguished. Um, just to talk a little bit more about what the nurse and forager roles are, in a, in a bumblebee colony, nurses are responsible for nest, nest construction and maintenance and for caring for the young. They're generally found uh, in the social center of a colony near the queen bee. In contrast, foragers actually leave the colony to go find food. Um, and when they're in the colony, in the hive, they will tend to be on the periphery and not socially centralized. So in their different working roles, nurses and foragers experience very different social contexts and amounts of social connectivity. So we wanted to see how this would affect um, their interactions with each other in uh, an extra hive context. Um, so in order to study the, the bees in an extra hive context, we first had to find a way to separate nurses and foragers. Um, so we did this by giving the foragers an opportunity to leave the hive and to go forage for pollen in a tent. So we took foragers out of that tent and then we isolated nurses from the social center of the hive right next to the queen and put them in a petri dish um, which was 10 centimeters in diameter and then we put a little wax on the bottom so that the bees would feel comfortable walking around. We were then able to take videos of the bees in this extra hive context. Um, we did trials with individual nurses and individual forager bees, as well as paired trials where we paired nurses with nurse bees, foragers with foraging bees, and we also had some mixed trials where we paired nurses with foragers. Um, and all of this experimental work was done with the help of the postdoc Yang Wong um, and an undergraduate Jean Cho from Sarah Coger's lab who are collaborators in this project. Um, now that we have these nice recordings of our bees behaving, we wanted a way to track their behavior. So we used an unsupervised machine learning algorithm called SLEEP, developed by Tamo Carrera, um, also in Joshua Shavitz's lab, which is able to individually track the position of any bee body, uh, sorry, any bee body part that we're interested in looking at. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were tracking as many body parts as we could, since we don't understand how these bumblebees are communicating, anything might be important. Um, 
But for the rest of the talk, I'm going to be focusing on the data that we get from the thorax coordinate. Uh, we're immediately able to see some pretty broad differences in how different types of bees are moving in different social um, contexts. So for example, lone nurses tend to do a lot of edge tracking. They have periods of both movement and stillness, but they move a lot throughout the course of a trial. Um, paired nurses, on the other hand, whether they're paired with another nurse or with a forager, will be very still throughout the course of a trial. They will occasionally move, but most of the time they're in the center of the plate and just grooming themselves or sitting um, and abdomen pumping. In contrast, lone foragers have periods of both motion and stillness, um, and, but they seem to be okay hanging out in the center of the plate. Paired foragers, on the other hand, are uh, very active and they spend a lot of time next to each other as well. Uh, and then most interestingly, um, foragers, when they're paired specifically with nurses, will spend the entire trial moving. So they don't have a single moment of stillness and they um, have a lot of edge tracking behavior in these trials. Uh, so here are some histograms basically summarizing what I just to told you. And again, I'd like to point out that this uh, sort of initial spike at speed equal zero is when the bees aren't moving at all. And foragers, when paired with nurses, completely lack that non-moving um, state. We were also interested in looking at how bees are arranged relative to each other. Uh, and so to do this, we wanted to see what the position of our target bee was with respect to our reference bee. So we reoriented the system so that it would be with respect to the orientation of a reference bee. And we're defining the orientation as the line from its thorax to its head coordinate. And then we populate a histogram around that reference bee using the positions of our target bee at each time point throughout the course of the video. So with this data, we can again see that nurses uh, throughout the course of the video in a pair trial with another nurse tend to be um, still and separated from each other. They don't show any particular preference in how they arrange themselves relative to each other, which is in strong contrast to how uh, foragers uh, act when they're in pairs. So two foragers really prefer to be right next to each other um, throughout the course of a video. They will often be focusing on uh, an edge of the plate together um, in the same location. When nurses are paired with foragers in a nurse forager trial, they spend the majority of their time behind the forager. Part of this is this following behavior that you can see in this video right now, where nurses who are moving in a nurse forager trial will often follow the forager around the edge of the plate. Um, another big component of the fact that nurses are behind foragers for the majority of the nurse forager trial is that the forager will just be running around the edge of the plate while the nurse is still in the center. Um, finally, foragers, as I mentioned before, are very edge focused in nurse forager trials. Um, so they have a fairly flat distribution with their position relative to a nurse. Uh, and you can see that on the 2D position on the plate, they also just spend all of their time around the edges. Um, so we were able to get some interesting data just by focusing on the thorax coordinate of our tracking data. But as you can see, there are a lot of really interesting interactions that we can't yet quantify just using that data. Um, so we've seen things, oops, <laughs> we've seen um, antenation interactions, things that look like they might be aggressive, um, times when bees are crossing over and under each other. And so to further quantify these interactions, we want to implement um, an automated behavior analysis, such as the motion mapper algorithm, which is used to describe the behavior of Drosophila. So this would involve taking the time traces of the individual joints of the bees and transforming them into a frequency space, and then using that to find stereotype behaviors that the bumblebees are engaging in, um, and hopefully be able to give us a better interaction, uh, sorry, a better idea of how they're interacting and how they're communicating with each other. Um, so in summary, We've developed a system to quantitatively study the social interactions of bumblebees in an extra hive context. We have identified big differences between how nurses and foragers behave in this extra hive context. And we've also shown that their behavior is dependent on what their social context actually is. So whether they're paired with a bee and if they are paired with a bee, which specific cast of bee they're paired with. 
Um, and we've developed a pipeline for future quantification of the more complicated interactions that we're seeing. So with that, I would like to thank uh, the entire Shavitz lab, um, and particularly Talmo for developing the amazing tracking software that we've been using. And I would also like to thank Jean and Yan from Sarah Coker's lab who carried out most of the um, experimental steps. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> you, were, you were totally fabulous on time. That was amazing. Hello. Grace, can you hear us? Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, but Grace just can't hear the feedback. Oh, we can't ask her a question. Uh, we can ask her by chat. Uh, she, why can't she hear us? Yes. I will ask everyone the question and I will, well, I will write it. I don't know how this is going to work. I wanted to know what would happen if she took bumblebees from different hives and, and looked at their paired behavior. Let's see. If this works. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't seem to be able to hear anyone. Um, but yes, let's see. Uh, bumblebees have interesting size variation. Have you explored that? Um, so uh, it looks like in general, um, at the start, it seems as though bumblebees that are larger are more likely to be foragers, um, and bumblebees that are smaller are more likely to be nurses, but they can exchange those roles pretty fluidly throughout the life of a hive. Um, so we haven't, we haven't explored it in depth, I would say. Uh, we don't really have any idea why there's that difference of behavior, at least not quantitatively. Um, an early hypothesis is that a big part of hive life is learning how to avoid other bees. Um, and so it might actually be very important for the more socialized bees, like nurses, to know when to interact with each other and when to back off. Um, and in some ways, the foragers seem almost hypersocial with each other. Uh, yes, sleep is a modified version of weep. Um, there, if sleep is not released yet, I think the release is coming pretty soon, although don't quote me on that. Um, but sleep, sleep is a social version of leap. It's able to individually track um, different animals and keep their identities consistent throughout the course of the video. We found it very useful. Uh, what would happen if you paired experiments if the bees came from different hives? We have done a couple of cross-hive experiments, although I don't have videos for those. Um, I would say we've, we haven't actually seen bees killing other bees, which uh, would have been kind of cool. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, so I, I would say we don't have quantitative data on that, but that's definitely something we're working on. Um, seasonal effects. We haven't seen, so our bees are raised um, indoors, so we haven't seen anything specifically attributable to seasonal effects. We have noticed that bees we get in the winter months are a lot more um, aggressive than bees we get in the summer or, or outside of winter, so we haven't been doing behavioral trials during the winter for that reason. Um, I think I'm supposed to stop now, but thank you so much for your questions and for dealing with my technical difficulties. Thank you, Grace. Yay. Yay. As much you can hear. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're moving on, and our next speaker is uh, Hongtang 